A fascinating presentation of hepatic hydrothorax. The liver is an essential organ in our bodies. Its functions include providing clotting proteins that allow blood to clot, it removes toxic substances, and regulates supply of sugar and fats for energy fuel. When the liver isn't functioning properly, many other organs are affected and cause complications that can be detrimental to our health. Hepatic hydrothorax is a complication of cirrhosis and portal hypertension. It's described in patients with a large transudative pleural effusion, which usually is greater than 500 milliliters. Transudate is fluid that results from imbalanced hydrostatic and osmotic forces. Diagnosis includes a right-sided pleural effusion in 85% of patients and evidence of infection due to the pleural effusion called spontaneous bacterial empyema. Hepatic hydrothorax results from accumulation of fluid in the abdomen that passes the peritoneal to the pleural cavity through small defects in the diaphragm. The negative intrathoracic pressure during inspiration allows fluid to pass from the abdomen to the pleural space. Cirrhosis is a complication of many liver diseases that affects the structure and function of the liver. The liver is able to repair itself but leaves scar tissue that prevents proper liver function from occurring. Scarring of the tissues obstructs proper blood flow to the liver resulting in backup into the portal vein causing additional injuries. The liver is also, also isn't able to excrete toxic substances called bile which then accumulates in the body. Common causes of cirrhosis include alcohol and hepatitis B and C. Cirrhosis causes weakness, jaundice, due to bilirubin in the blood, easy bruising, and loss of appetite. Cirrhosis can lead to other complications such as hepatic encephalopathy, liver cancer, edema, ascites, and many others. Portal hypertension is what occurs when the scar tissue of the liver obstructs blood flow to the liver and results in a backup of blood flow. Symptoms and complications involve gastrointestinal bleeding, ascites, or accumulation of fluid in the abdomen, reduced level of platelets, and encephalopathy. This article is a reported case of a patient that was infected with hepatitis C who presented with altered mental status, tachypnea, hypoxia, decreased breath sounds over the right lung, fetal edema, and yellowing of the eyes. She was diagnosed with hepatic encephalopathy and placed on a ventilator. Once being placed on the ventilator, the pleural effusion resolved due to the positive intrathoracic pressure. Once the patient was weaned off the ventilator and removed, the patient's pleural effusion immediately reoccurred, which forced her to be placed back on the ventilator. Treatment for this patient included mechanical ventilation due to her altered mental status and diagnosed hepatic encephalopathy, a thoracentesis to aid in fluid removal, lactose, and rifaximin to reduce the blood ammonia levels. She was also given intravenous albumin infusions to aid in excessive protein loss, and albumin may be used to maintain cardiovascular function after the removal of large volumes of acidic fluid. Due to the portal hypertension blocking blood flow, it resulted in fluid building up in the abdomen called acidities. This buildup of fluid needed, to, needed a place to go which resulted in diaphragmatic defects, opening and leaking fluid into the pleural space of the lungs. The negative intrathoracic pressure during inspiration aided in the migration of fluid. While on the mechanical ventilation, the positive pressure pushed the fluid back into the less pressurized peritoneal area, which is why the pleural effusion result, resolved almost immediately. Once taken off ventilation, the process of fluid entering the pleural space again flowed, flowed back, thus resulting in hepatic hydrothorax and recurrent pleural effusions. Many patients with hepatic hydrothorax have a right-sided pleural effusion seen on a chest x-ray. The patient's chest x-ray shows that before being placed on mechanical ventilation, her right-sided pleural effusion showed complete opacification. During ventilation, the pleural effusion is almost completely resolved. Until they took her off mechanical ventilation, which then allowed fluid to come back into the pleural space, and again showing complete opacification on the right side. Some treatment modalities for hepatic hydrothorax include thoracentesis that expels the fluid from the chest, tips which reduces portal pressure and prevent bleeding from esophageal varices in cirrhotic patients. Pleurodesis, which is surgical procedure to prevent recurrent effusions. Repair of the diaphragmatic defects, which can help aid in fluid buildup from the abdomen, making its way back into the pleural space. And the most effective option is liver transplant to get rid of the scarred liver and replace it with a new healthy one. Unfortunately, the list of liver transplant recipients is very long and most patients won't receive transplants. Patient assessment was very important with this individual. She came into kipnic, dyspneic, 
and altered mental status. Although those symptoms can lead to many different outcomes, they need to find out more in order to diagnose. Her medical history guided practitioners into looking closely into liver complication. They placed her on mechanical ventilation due to severe mental status and found more information from the chest x-ray and lab results. Her x-ray showed a large pleural effusion on the right side, and lab results came back showing, showing her lack of albumin, thrombocytes, and abnormal liver enzymes and coagulation parameters that helped diagnose her liver condition leading to hepatic hydrothorax. Hepatic hydrothorax occurs in 5-15% to of patients with cirrhosis and portal hypertension. The entrance of fluid into the pleural space occurs when defects develop in the diaphragm. Ultimately, the only cure for hepatic hydrothorax is a liver transplant. This case was published to provide medical professionals with the knowledge to accurately diagnose and treat patients suffering from this condition. The recurrent pleural effusions gave a big clue as to what they were dealing with and where it must have come from. The transudative fluid helped them understand what type of fluid it was and how much was accumulated. The case was also provided to show how fluid can travel due to pressure gradients, allowing one area to fill up and you refill after positive pressure is discontinued. I found that the liver can provide many beneficial roles to our organ system, and when it is diseased and or scarred, the complications of fluid buildup can even lead to respiratory complications and cause many additional problems. Questions after reading this article. Without chest x-ray, would we be able to clearly diagnose a patient with hepatic hydrothorax in what other ways could we determine their location? Was discontinuing mechanical ventilation before fixing the underlying disease beneficial in this case? And why did they diagnose the patient with hepatic encephalopathy first before hepatic hydrothorax?